Series. One of the biggest compliments a category can be paid is the arrival of an overseas team to try and show the locals how it's done. At this round, there's two drivers from Hong Kong who compete in the F3 Asia Championship, and they're absolutely amazed at just how fast our Aussie guys are. I really want to come to Australia a long time ago because I know the racing here is really competitive. We are the first weekend to come in uh, Australia to race, and I find it very difficult and also find very good fun. The circuit is really good. All the corners were really fast and long and blind. You, you get into the corner, you don't see the apex. By the time you get to the apex, you don't see the exit. It's really, really tough. I was quite happy for qualifying six because I just have uh, a first session now. It's uh, Saturday morning in the qualifying and I don't have any practice. Jonathan, how would the Aussie guys rate in your championship back home? Whoa, whoa, they are really good. We are getting set for race one. This will be the onboard shot. You will see it's Barton Moore. He has pole position with Michael Caruso alongside Christian Jones, Carl Reidler, James Cressy, Marchie Lee for Race Talk International, having their first race this weekend here in Australia. And then it's back to Liddell, Fitzgerald, Rundle, Gilmore, Algadri, Borg, Chan and Holmes. Well, there's the grid set. Rod Anderson also in the field, John Boothman and Bill Maddox. The second of our onboards will be Kenny Habul, will be the red car, easy to spot, set for a start. They get off the line, oh, one of them's missed it, I think it's Marchi Lee, who stopped right on the grid and squeezed up the room. All sorts of drama there on the start grid, cars stopping and starting. A couple there I thought might have jumped on board now with Kenny Habul as they head down and dice for the first turn. Very tight down through the first turn they go, absolutely nose to tail. One of the scud races in all sorts of dramas there off the start. They are able to avoid each other relatively and continue on. James Cressy running a little bit wide and look at this. We've got Kenny Habul trying to find a way past. Great start for Habul. He went from eighth to third on the grid and he's up there challenging for second right now. They start their run up over the top of the Yokohama Bridge and back onto the course proper. And Kenny Habul up in third position, a position he hasn't been in for a long time. And touched! Goodness gracious! Whoa! Straight up through the air. Kenny Habul, he's got a very bent car. He's moving around in the cockpit, so that's good news. Damien Ice White joining us in commentary. That was a big hit. And what an idiot I am. I thought about having a go on these category, but if you see James Cressy's car right in the middle of the corner there, seems to prop and stop. And I'm speechless, as we probably all are. And thank goodness Habul looks like he's OK. But Cressy, on what is normally a fast part of the circuit, looked like he stopped dramatically. You can see his car twitching around there, then suddenly... As with slow-mo, that car slowed down very dramatically. I was about to say, uh, Damien, how twitchy these things are from the onboard. And uh, obviously, Cressy having problems there as he heads off the bridge. I tell you what, once you touch wheels and open wheel of racing, that is the result. The Ralph Schumacher manoeuvre, if you like, and Kenny Habul bouncing around a lot. Well, Cressy's in the pit, luckily with only a bit of wing damage. Let's hear from his crew manager, Paul Grimm. Well, one of the cars running in the back of us on the first lap and just taken the wing and launched himself up in the air. That's fine, the only top part of the wing was missing and we were just trying to salvage as many points as we could. And that may well be the end of James Cressy's assault on the 2003 Australian Formula 3 National Championship. Never give up Voido and Cressy won't, as you can tell by the fact he's gone out there with no wing just to see if he can gain some valuable points. He's going to have a lot of fun when he goes down through the king as we watch Michael Caruso working his way back through the field side by side with Hackett. Textbook move, Caruso's got a better run under the straight, tucked in right behind, pulled out at the right moment, on the way into turn one, very smooth, very easy. Great effort from Michael Caruso there in the car that looks like a mini Ferrari. It's got the scarlet red paint job, the shell on the side. We see a replay now on the Donut King, King replay as he slipstreams down past Peter Hackett and uh, clips off another place on the grid. And you can see his car's very, very smooth under brakes and he's tucking right in behind Matt Fitzgerald now. Possibly we'll think about a move into the last corner, but why wouldn't he save and copy that same move again? Well, you can see he's right up under the rear wing of Matt Fitzgerald as they come down into the braking area. But you've called it right, Damien. He's going to close it up and see what he can do down the main straight. Must be running less wing or something like that. Well, the fact that Fitzgerald actually braked a little bit later than him would, would indicate that Fitzgerald's got running more wing. But, of course, with the Fiat power and less wing,
wing, Caruso's got a little bit more straight line speed, and there you have it, a copy, pass him into turn one, break nice and smoothly for turn two. Just picking them off one by one, Michael Caruso, and uh, out in front there we see our race leader who we're with now, Mark Moore on board in his car, and uh, an enormous young talent he is. His father, of course, Dave Moore, one of the best open wheeler engineers in the country, so this guy's learning a lot about car setup, and he's got an enormous amount of ability as a driver well. Pulls third gear about here, backs it back down the second takedown through the S's, and feathers the throttle of this part of the circuit, trying to keep the car nice and smooth and in control. Yes, with clear track, Barton's doing a great job out in front. Well, the track was clear, but Jonathan Chan put it in the grass there, coming onto the start finish straight. Drags all sorts of gravel back onto the track. Oh, but here our Gardry's car. I wonder if those two have had a coming together. I think they may have, and uh, I've got a feeling that might bring the safety car yes, out. Right. Yes, indeed. You're right, obviously the car there in a dangerous position, unlike Kenny Habul's car, which ended up 100 metres off the circuit. Mahair's buried it in the circuit, I think, wasn't it? Exactly. Mahair's buried it into the concrete. Looks like they now are coming around for a restart. Yeah, the safety car pulls off. But more will lead them down across the start-finish line with two laps to go on this one. Damien White, talk us through this one. Well, I'm not sure what gears are in. I'll give it a guess, but no doubt fifth there, maybe back to fourth. Look at the head bouncing around fourth, third, second gear. Look at the tyres, the, the rubber looking up on the tyres, accelerate out hard. Third, fourth underneath the bridge. Have a look in the mirrors, brake hard again, back to second gear. Turn the head in, fighting against the G-forces. You can see the grip on the steering wheel, his knuckles are almost blowing through the gloves. Up to third again, brake and back to second. The big bump, look at the head go, bump. Head up to the bridge, I think a lot of drivers think about third. Barton may leave it in second. A nice smooth exit off the bridge, a little bit of opposite lock. And judging by the vision we saw before, Barton doing a fantastic job, picking the same bit of tar, the same apexes, the same braking points, the same turning points. And you can see why he's leading this race comfortably. Well, they say motorsport isn't a real sport. I give you on board with Barton Moore. Physical, demanding, mental, everything you want out of a sport in itself. Here's the fight for second place, and Caruso is all over Christian Jones. He's trying to get a better run onto the straight and use the superior speed of his Fiat as they head down past the start-finishing line. Will he catch him, and will he get past him? He looks like he's in the right position to do it. Goes straight to the inside, down through turn one. A very good overtaking manoeuvre. Michael Caruso picks up second, relegates Christian Jones back one. A textbook move there from Michael Caruso. He pulled out of the slipstream a little bit later than the previous moves we've seen, but did it to perfection. Has he got enough time left in his hands, John, to catch our race leader? Might not be quite enough distance for him to catch him. He's close, but I don't think he's close enough to catch this man. But more as he leads the race, as he has done from the start. I don't think he has got enough time. And Michael Caruso, you've got to say, would be kicking himself. He did absolutely made a disastrous start. Went back all those positions, and one can only wonder now what might have been if he made a clean start. Yeah, what a team this is, Barton Moore. Bob Johns and all the crew have put together a pretty slick outfit, and it's paid dividends to put this man behind the wheel of this car. Caruso having a last lap lunge, but it's not going to pay dividends, because Barton Moore comes up across the start-finish line, salutes the sky and takes the chequered flag over Michael Caruso and Christian Jones in third. Great effort there from Barton Moore, a terrific race, and he's driven it well. Let's see the uh, Volkswagen race score. Barton Moore taking the win ahead of Michael Caruso, Christian Jones, then Rydler, Hackett, Fitzgerald, and Lee. Chris Gilmore in 10th, having his first run in F3. Went to plan, we're on pole, got a good start. Our left and left the gap there, and then the safety car came out, which bunched us all up again. We sort of gave the race another element, really, and we hung on again, so I'm happy. The car was really fast in the race, and um, it should looks good for the second race anyway. Obviously, pretty heavy hit at the back there. What exactly happened? Kenny Habo was just, it's just a loose unit, really. Um, I was breaking, turning right into, into the corner down the hill and he just went straight into the back of me. Michael, how's Kenny? What happened? Oh, he's got a brilliant start in that race from eighth up to third and he was driving uh, extremely well. It's the best that he's done all year. And then just after he came off the bridge, he was gaining on uh, Cressy a fair bit and then James just suddenly slowed and Kenny had nowhere to go other than straight up and he went about two metres odd in the air and the car come down in a big way but uh, it's winded him a fair bit and he's got a fair bit of pain across his chest so the medicals have taken off, uh, take him through to Liverpool Hospital and check him out but I think that's the end of uh, our day, the car's fairly extensively damaged.